Today we are going to go over a Flagstaff EPRO. We are going to start with our storage right here. You do have the magnetic clips when you bring your door up, so it does last like that. There's nothing to worry about breaking or getting damaged. Just pull down, slam it shut, you're all good to go there. The keys you are going to get with your entrance door are going to work on all of your storages as well, so you will have one key for every lock throughout. Inside our storage here, you do have a table and you do also have drop down hooks and a griddle that comes with from factory that are going to go on a rail back here we'll go over when we get there. Inside the storage as well, you do have a light right above it that is push button right in the center. Moving away from the storages, we have more to go over on the other side. We'll come right here. You do have a plug in for solar panel on the side. This is going to be an additional way of charging your onboard batteries. You get a smaller solar panel dish, it plugs in, it's already wired into your battery, it's going to charge it like that. Moving around front, we do have your tongue jack here. This is going to be how you operate up and down. So you go up with the switch, you go up, down goes down with the switch here that gives you lights. If you ever need to manually operate this, it's a, you, your battery's dead. If you pull this little plastic tab, you are going to have a manual crank handle that goes down the side of the hole so you can manually operate this up and down. One there. Coming back right here. Our propane tanks are located right here. You do have a cover that goes along with them. It goes over top. It has holes on it right here and on the other side. So you can take a small bungee cord underneath that tray. Keep hold this down and help secure it when you're in travel if you're worried about it moving. When you set it on the camper, it sits like this. You have these little twist caps. They twist and pull back out of the way. Once they... Oops. Once they come down, you always lift it up like this. Always make sure it opens up towards you, never towards the front of the camper. You get a strong gust of wind, it will take this off and it will smack the front. Once you go to your propane tanks and you go to open them, you wanna open them all the way up or all the way closed. You never wanna have them anywhere in between. You can lose up to 60% of pressure that goes through your system. Right here, you do have your LP regulator. This version is the automatic switchover, so it has a little dial right here pointing at this tank proving it's pulling 100% of its pressure from this side. You can manually swap it over to make it pull off this side, and if you don't feel like that, you've been using this tank for a while, you're worried it's going to go empty while you're using your furnace at night, you can always open up your other tank. Once this tank goes completely empty, there's a diaphragm in here that will allow it to flip and continue to pull pressure from this side. Behind your LP tanks, you are going to have your battery box. This is where your batteries will be located. Your batteries inside will trickle charge off the satin way right here, connected to your tow vehicle, off the solar panel, plug in on the side we went over, and off your solar panel on the roof, as well as shore power. You do have a battery disconnect right back here on the back side of your tanks. Right now it is pointing up towards on. That's going to connect your battery to the camper, allow everything to pull power from it, also allow everything on the camper to charge it. Once you flip it towards the off door side of the unit, you are going to turn it off. From there, you completely disconnect the battery. Nothing can pull power from it, but then again, nothing can also charge it. So if you want to charge your battery off of any of those systems, it does have to be in the on position. Coming over here, you, do, you will have all of your vehicle information. You will have your tire sizes and pressures cold. Coming right down here, you do have two coax hookups here. These ones are labeled. If your campsite offers cable, you hook up here. If you have the off-site satellite dish, it hooks in there. Right underneath it is going to be right here. This is going to be your city water connection. You will get a drinking water hose. You do not want a garden hose because garden hoses have the chemicals and oils in them. You get them inside the system, you will taste them forever. Once you hook your drinking water hose up here, the pressure you have going through that hose will be the pressure getting delivered to all of your fixtures. This fitting is rated for 70 PSI. Your lines behind it are rated for 200 PSI. So we do usually suggest getting a reducer or a regulator to make sure you never exceed that pressure limit. The one right next to it is going to be a secondary fitting that you could winterize off this. You do have a switch right here, which operates docking LED lights on the front. More vehicle information, 
You do have an outside shower right here, so this pulls down, drops down, gives you access to that, which the hose is inside our storage here. Pull this, make sure these line up, push in and twist to lock it in place, and then you now have an outside shower. Same, same system on this side of the storage. These come over. This one does have the wheel model so that you could take the bottom plate off of the front of it, put the wheel on it, make it easier for moving by hand. You do have your manual crank handles inside the storage as well, along with a lot of extra accessories that Flagstaff likes to send along with their units. Your power cord will be located in here as well. Behind our door, you will have your fresh water fill up. You set your hose in here, you will gravity fill your water tank that is on board. You do have a water pump on board that will pull out of that tank, deliver fix water to all of your fixtures inside. There is a drain for this that is located right down here. This one is just like a regular gate valve. So you push in, that is closed, pull that like that, that is open. That's going to be how, allowing you to drain it. Since we're down here, we'll go over our tongue jacks, or our stabilizer jacks here. These ones here, that is a three, four size socket, so you can manually run it down with a crank handle, or you can get that with an impact. If you do an impact, make sure that you don't over crank it. These are only for stabilizing, you cannot use them to level. So once you get to your campsite, you're happy with your level, you will run these down and they help prevent the camper from rocking or moving while you are inside of it. With this particular system, you do have to make sure that you push this little thing down, disconnect this chain, so this will actually allow this to go down without breaking anything. Back up, you do have your power hookup right here. This is a 30 amp shore power cord here. It pushes in, you will twist it to the right to lock it, and then you will take your twist cap that's on the cord Snug it down hand tight to make sure that core stays in its locked position. Alright. In here we do have our water heater. Right here, this is an anode rod. This is a sacrificial rod that breaks down over time and coasts and lines the inside of your tank to help prevent mineral buildups from eating through your tank. There is a smaller steel rod inside of it, so once you start to be once you start to see big chunks or gashes missing out of this, it is time to replace this. This is also a 1 1 16 size socket, so you will get it in here, start to hand thread it, and then you will take your socket and just snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it because you can run into the issue of stripping those threads or breaking that off inside. This particular water heater is the electric and propane side. Both of those are operate operable from inside. You will turn them on from either propane or electric from inside. With the electric side of this, you cannot turn it on unless there is water inside of the water heater. When you fill it, they do suggest from factory that you will sit here and you will hold this like that to allow all of the air pressure to be pushed out as water comes in its place. It is also a lot easier once you are filling this to turn on the hot side of any of your faucets inside, then you can sit inside in the AC and allow the actual water to be push the air out and you will be able to see it and hear it from your faucet. You do have these two caps right here which are for our low point drains. They are located on the door side of the camper. They are tucked up. They are the lowest points over your water lines. They allow you to drain out as much water from the system as you can but when you are in use those always have to be connected. over our slide system with our slide here specifically this system we have two bits of maintenance to go over your first bit being you will want to get a product called slide out seal lubrication it sprays on a white foam on all of the rubber up the side over the top and back down the other side you don't have to wipe it up you don't have to dry it up it dries up looks like it was never there it's just going to help keep these nice and soft once those start to get brittle, dry, rot, crack, torn, or ripped, then you do want to bring them in, get them replaced, because this is the number one line of defense from keeping water from going inside your store or inside your camper. Second bit of maintenance is just make sure there's never any debris on the roof line when you are running this in and out. 
Also with this slide system, when you are operating it and you see it has these bars, you have to come in all the way or out all the way. You cannot stop in the middle. You can, if you do so so many times, throw this off balance and you will start to see it one side go out before the other and then it'll catch itself. If you ever get into that predicament and that does happen, run it out all the way, hold your button for 10 seconds, and then you will run it in all the way and then continue to hold the button for 10 seconds. And that is called its relearning process. You will set it back on the right track. You do not lubricate these bars because you can mess with the motors inside that do internally run this system in and out. Down here, we do have our drain system. You have your black tank on this side, which is color coded by this black candle, and you have your gray tank on this side. On this particular unit, both the kitchen sink and the bathroom sink and the shower all run into this gray tank. The toilet runs into this black tank here. When you dump them, you always dump your black side first, pull it all the way, make sure nothing's coming out, and then use the wastewater from your gray tank to rinse out your sewage hoses. The reason you always want to do that is so uh, you can drain it and use that sewage hose or use your wastewater from gray side to rinse out your sewage hose. Also because gray is such a large or a smaller diameter of piping that if you have gray open and it's drained all the way when you pull black it will come out in so much force it can back its way into your gray tank. Right up here you do have the back door which gives you access to the rear bunk and storage back here as well that is accessible from inside the unit. Right back here you do have a ladder for rooftop access so with the ladder being there it is rated for a maximum capacity of 250 pounds. That also means the roof is walkable you are allowed to walk on it. You are prepped for the backup camera there if you ever wanted to add that on. There is four Phillips screws holding that cap on. That cover comes off, your camera plugs in, same four Phillips hooks it up. And then the daytime running lights on your truck as long as they are on. And you have the monitor panel inside the truck plugged into a 12 volt outlet. They will connect automatically through the antennas. You do have the hitch on the back that allows you to add on for additional storage. You could also add a bike rack. Or if you wanted to, you could add on the storage for the smaller tanks that you can actually pull around for when you are dumping. Right here before we move back on to the door side, you have what we call a black tank flush. You can hook your hose up to this. It's going to flush water through that tank, help push out any solids from inside your tank as you are dumping. With this here, you don't want to do this every single time you dump. You want to do it every third to fifth time because your tanks are lined and coated with a special kind of chemical to help prevent anything from sticking. So if you do this every single time, you are eventually going to wear those chemicals out faster and then you're running into issues with things sticking. The second thing with this is always make sure that black tank handle is open all of the way before you turn your water on. If that handle is closed when you turn your water on here, you are going to fill your tank up. You can back up through the toilet. These do have vents on the roof that allow the smell to dissipate over time. If you are filling it up, it's going to pressure way, pressurize its way up the roof and it will you'll be the person the campsite known for brown showers from up top coming around this side right here is the rack I was mentioning so your table and the racks for the griddle will hook in here and then they will rest your griddle also has an LP quick connect right here so this is tied into our propane system up front so you will pull this you take your hose, you push it, you slide this back, you push your hose in there, let go of that, and it actually latches to it and connects it there. From there, once you are fully connected, you will take this lever, point it toward you, and that's actually going to allow it to flow propane up to the griddle, and also lock that hose in there to where it can't be ripped out or cause any kind of damage. Right here, you do have GFI protective 110 outlets outside. Up here, we do have the exhaust for our range hood. So you are going to take both thumbs, push up and pull out towards you. And that is going to open it up for when you are cooking, you can actually allow it to exhaust out of the unit. To close this, same process, but backwards. Push up and in, and that latches in place. 
right here we do have the exhaust for a furnace so all of your cold air goes down the bottom all of your hot air comes out of the top with this here you will see that there are screens in our store also you will see them on other campers those are something we do highly suggest they do sit around here they come with a tool and two springs one spring will hook it up here one will hook it up there it is really good and it is a good line of defense from keeping ladybugs stink bugs and mud daubers from going inside mud daubers are really notorious for smelling their smelling the propane they'll go in there they'll build their nest up you try to fire your furnace you have all that back pressure now you're running into issues with ruining or destroying your furnace and have to bring it in to get it replaced your door does pull over this one does have this bracket here and this hook here so this will actually hook it in place drop down like that and it'll actually hold your door open your steps here when you bring these down this black plate needs to be as close to the silver one as you can get it, it touching is perfectly okay if this is pushed up at all and you see it you go to shut your door and then you are going to catch the bottom piece of it and then you're messing your door up so always make sure this is as low as you can get it these steps do lift up they have this blue tab that pulls over they sit like that and that's going to lock them when you are in transit because you will have your door shut pinching it here and here keeping it secure if you need to adjust your legs and extend them pull them out extends there's a little blade right here you will push in and just drop back down like so all right so right here we are and now into our control panel up here is where you are going to control and operate everything motorized on the unit so up here you do have all your lights these ones are labeled other units don't have them labeled like this so this one has an awning light here a step light here and an interior light this specific we rv box has an app that you can download on your phone that will actually show you everything and you control it on your phone as well through the bluetooth connect here you do also have your water heaters here gas is going to be the first one by indicated by the flame electric is going to be the other side then you have your water pump and you also have a fresh tank tank heater so if it is going to be in the 20s at the lowest you can turn that on and it'll help prevent anything freezing anything lower than 20 you will actually freeze whatever is in that tank and we do suggest actually finding a way of draining that you do have your controls for your awning here and your slide room here retract runs the awning in extend runs it out and then the slide is just in and out up here you will see all of these different dots this side is your battery if you are plugged into shore power that will always read the fullest it can read if you want an accurate reading on your battery you do have to unplug from shore power and that's going to be show you the accurate level over here you have your fresh tank your black tank and your gray tank black and gray will always be in the green when they are empty and then they will go green green yellow red fresh tank will go red yellow green green as it fills they are different because they are used on how you depend on which tank you are actually working on at that point in time the gfi to this unit is located right here by the door and then you do have a fire extinguisher on the other side that is to only save your life in case of a fire that is not to be used to sit and fight a fire in case of fire only use that to get yourself to safety right below it under the bed you do have a little box with a power button that is going to be how you turn on the onboard inverter so that inverter means if you have battery power on but you aren't plugged into shore power and you would like to use some of your actual 110 outlets you turn that on and that is going to convert your 12 volt power into 110 allowing you to use those outlets up here you can see it says wine garden gateway 5g you are this unit is prepped for wi-fi so you could add wi-fi on with a router box right here allowing you to have that this one does have the smart 12 volt tvs it's where you could use your tv on just 12 volt alone without actually having to worry about being plugged in and it is the smart variation of that your radio is also built into this tv so there is a way of controlling it having your tv sound come through the sound bar there or the speakers outside along with your radio you do have smoke detector with a nine volt battery in it above my head all of your blinds pull down they roll up to bring them back down pull them down where you want them they will lock in place 
right here you do have your emergency exit window so this tab pushes over pulls up this slides over pushes out and it can sit like that for ventilation this specific window is designed to if you push this out further and it goes out to a full 90 degree angle to fall flat down to the ground so in case you have someone else in here and they follow you through that window it doesn't small and or fall and smack them in the face so always make sure that that window never goes up to a full 90 degree angle unless you are really trying to get out of it right here you do have a spot for wireless charging so you can set your phone on here this will charge it this also pushes down pulls up locks in place then you do have 110 outlets, USB, and Type-C hookups here. Coming over this way, right here, this is the solar panel and charge controller. So this is just showing you what the solar panel on the roof is doing at its current point in time. Right here, you do have the exhaust for your range hood. So you do have light on this side, and then your fan speed on this side. The fan is a 12 volt fan, so always give it a few seconds before it fully gets up to speed. There is nothing wrong with it when you first turn it on and it doesn't automatically get to where it needs to be speed wise. Back here on this specific unit, this is a 12 volt refrigerator like all of them, but this one has a switch so you can turn that off and on. So if you want to charge your battery but not have your refrigerator on, you can turn it off right there. Your cooktop here has the glass up top. This lifts up, up again. Always make sure that the glass is up before setting your burners to go. Always make sure the metal is cool before bringing it back down. To light it, you will always just turn these over like so. And then you have an igniter built in like so. That's going to be how you light your cooktop. You do have a light switch over here. One line does all of your top lights off. Two lines does your oven light down below. For the oven, you will push in and hold this for 10 to 15 seconds to allow the air pressure to be bled out and allow propane in its place. Once you've done that, you will be continue to use your igniter here, flip it a few times, and then you will see right down here is where your burner will actually light. After that lights, continue to hold this for five to 10 seconds to heat up your thermocoupler before allowing it to go full up to temp. Once it does that, you can let go twist this way the dial does have temperatures up top and then you can set it where you want it temperature wise right here this is going to be the thermostat for the ac the fan in the ac and your furnace down below you just press this smaller long button up on the screen it will show you what's turning on between fan it'll be fan low fan high cool which will be high fan, low fan, auto high and auto low, we do suggest leaving it on auto at all times, either high or low, because then it'll detect the temperature you have set, which is able to be set with the arrows. Once it gets up to that temperature, once, it bring, once the AC brings it down to that temperature, it will turn itself off to help save power. The moment it goes right back up above that temperature, it'll turn the AC on to bring it right back down. And then you'd click it one more time, you will go to furnace, that's always on automatic, It'll bring it up to that temperature, shut off the moment it gets there. The moment it becomes one degree cooler, it'll turn it back on, bring it right back up to that temperature you had it set at. You do have a microwave above the refrigerator, and then you do have your refrigerator here. This does have this lock right here, so this slides out of the way. And then you have your freezer up top, and then your refrigerator down low. This does have a temperature dial down there in the corner, so you can set your own temperature where you would like it. Like I've already mentioned, this is a 12 volt refrigerator. So as long as your battery up front has power, this refrigerator will always be on, always be cooling. So when you go to leave home to go to your campsite, you can put items in here. It'll actually cool the whole time you're traveling because your battery is going to be charged off the truck, allowing this to be cold and everything inside of it to be fully cold by the time you get to your campsite. Before we move into the bathroom, coming right down here, we do have our converter. So you push in on that, this drops down. You do have all of your circuit breakers here, and then you have automotive grade fuses on this side. If one of those fuses blow, it'll have a bright red LED directly next to it, telling you exactly which one you need to replace, which you will be able to see through the vent holes here. You will see this one has the sticker that says auto detect. That's depending on what kind of battery you have. 
We do primarily put lead acid batteries on these, but if you ever wanted to switch away from that and go to lithium, there's nothing wiring you need to do. This will automatically detect that, tell the rest of your appliances inside you are now on a lithium battery, so you don't have to worry about it overcharging or ruining anything. Right here, we do have our LP and carbon monoxide detector. That is always going to be on as long as you have 12 volt power. These do have a shelf life of five to seven years before they need to be replaced. And they are also built like GFI, so the more they go off, the weaker they become, meaning they become more sensitive. Once it gets to either of those points, there's two screws here. This pulls out, and then the one you get to replace it with will have the same color-coded 12-volt wiring on the back for easy replacement. If you ever hear this go off and you don't know what calls it to, get out of the camper, let it ventilate, call your local dealership, tell them you want a drop test performed to make sure you do not have an LP leak. If you know what set it off, you might cover your eardrum, and sit and hold this test mute button right here until it actually gets quiet. This will have a green LED directly underneath that is always going to be indicating when it is on. Once it comes to the end of its life, that green LED will flash at you red two times telling you that it is there, which is actually labeled right down here underneath where that light is. Into the bathroom. You have a light switch here, which operates all your lights. This one does have the sink, which pulls down like that. And then when you're done with it, you lift up and it actually drains down low. Your toilet here, if you lightly press like that, you will feel a spot of tension. That is going to be how you fill your bowl with water. All the way down does flush it. You do have an exhaust fan right up here that you will actually pull down to unlock it. You will twist it this way and it actually opens up the vent lid on the roof to allow you to actually vent out any of the steam from your toilet or steam from your shower, blow it on out. To close it, make sure you twist it all the way. Make sure that's all the way down, get it like that, push it back up to lock it back in place. Your shower over here, you do have hot and cold. This particular one, has a tab that you actually have to, when you turn your water on, you have to lift up and actually allows it to divert the water to the shower head. Then this one has what they call the shower miser. It is a little tab system here. And then there is a diagram back here. So if you have this tap down, that is actually going to flow the water to it and then flow the water back to the pressure source that it's at. No, that one's, sorry, that's wrong. This is great. That is so if you are on city water, you can actually flip that down. Or if you were pulling off your fresh water tank, if you have that down, any water that you don't use will actually recirculate its way back down to your fresh water tank. So if you were hooked up to city water before you leave, you want to fill your fresh water tank without taking your hose off, you can come to your shower, flip this into the off position like so, and it is actually going to allow you to fill your freshwater tank from inside. If you have this tab pointing towards you, that turns it off. They have pointed out and mentioned that you can turn it off while all of your hot water come here. This blue section here is supposed to turn red when it gets hot, telling you when your hot water is ready and you are ready to actually take your shower. And then when you flip it up towards the shower head, that is actually going to be what allows it to go through the actual tub fill or through your shower head there. And I think that's it.